Hello, I'd like to go over for you the equipment and process needed to install an AFL compression dead end on a 3M ACCR high capacity transmission conductor. Because of the conductor's high temperature performance and special materials, you should only use accessories and equipment such as dead ends qualified for use with 3M ACCR. If you have any questions, contact us at accr at mmm.com. First, I'd like to review the equipment used for the dead end installation. The dead end itself is composed of an outer sleeve, a steel forging with a felt washer installed, and an aluminum insert. These dead ends grip the outer aluminum strands and the inner aluminum matrix composite core wires separately. After the dead end is installed, the eye is connected to the insulator string on the dead end tower or a substation connection. The assembly also comes with a plug for the grease port located in the outer sleeve. The aluminum inserts may be one of two types, a smooth insert or a slotted insert depending on the size and type of the conductor. You will also need a cable trimmer, otherwise known as a cable circumciser. The kit shown here includes a variety of die sizes for different size conductors. Other equipment that is required includes a hammer, tape measure, file, a roll of vinyl electrical tape, a marker, and a cutting tool. For the press, you'll need two different sizes of dies, a smaller one sized for the steel forging and a larger one for the outer sleeve. Qualified dies are stamped with an ACCR suffix. Only dies stamped with this suffix are to be used for installing the ACCR dead end. In addition, you will need high temp AFL filler compound, a wire brush, and approved bar of soap. Finally, installing the dead end requires the use of a 100 ton press and a 10,000 PSI pump. To begin working with the dead end, remove the insert from the steel forging and measure its length. Add one and a half inches and transfer this measurement to the conductor. Measuring from the end, mark the conductor. Next, use the cable trimmer to trim off the outer aluminum wires. Making sure the correct size dies are installed in the cable trimmer, line the clamp up with the mark you made on the conductor. Using the cable trimmer, carefully cut through the outer aluminum wires. This is important. Don't nick the composite core wires while trimming the aluminum layers. To avoid this, only score through the last layer of aluminum wires halfway. Then by using a back and forth motion, peel off the aluminum wires exposing the core and the aluminum tape around it. When you line up the end of the insert with the end of the core wires, you should have an inch and a half of exposed core between the trimmed aluminum wires and the insert. If your dead end comes with a smooth insert like this, leave the aluminum tape in place. If you have a slotted insert like this, remove the tape from around the exposed core wires. Now take the outer sleeve and locate the three start and stop marks. Mark each of them with a marker. Place the outer sleeve over the conductor, narrow end first, and push it back out of the way. Remove the aluminum insert from the steel forging. Hold the insert over the outside of the forging lining up the ends. Make a mark on the forging at the end of the insert. This indicates the actual depth of the insert. Next, measure a half inch from the first mark towards the forging end and make a second mark. This second mark is called the start mark. Replace the aluminum insert back into the steel forging. Also, be sure the felt washer is on the forging by the eye. To press the steel forging, first insert the required set of steel dies into the 100 ton press. 
Be sure the core wires are fully inserted into the steel forging. Next, be sure that the aluminum insert is pushed completely into the steel forging so that it is flush with the end of the steel forging. Align the start mark on the steel forging with the bite edge of the die. This is the edge of the bite formed when the forging is compressed, not the edge of the die itself. Make sure that the top hat of the 100 ton press is installed and locked into place. Be certain that the conductor is held straight and level with the press head. Keeping the conductor straight and level will result in a compressed forging that will not be curved or deformed. While keeping the core wires tight inside the forging, make the first compression on the forging with a 100 ton press. Make certain that the two die halves close completely and that the pump pressure reaches 10,000 PSI on each compression bite. Move the forging and conductor to do the second press so that the bite edge of the die overlaps the last bite by a half an inch. Make the second compression. Continue down the entire length of the forging in the same way, making sure to overlap the die bites. When you've completed compressing the steel forging, you'll notice that the aluminum insert extrudes from the end. This is why the outer aluminum wires are trimmed an extra inch and a half past the length of the steel forging. After the steel forging is compressed on the core wires, make sure to secure the forging so it does not drop or hang down. This can cause uneven stress on the core wires. Brushing the conductor is mandatory. This removes oxides and ensures a good electrical connection all along the dead end. To properly apply the filler compound and brush the conductor, first measure the length of the outer sleeve and transfer this length measurement onto the conductor. Mark the conductor. Remove any tape that may be on the conductor. Run a bead of high temperature filler compound along the length of the conductor up to the mark that was made. Next, vigorously brush the compound into the conductor with a wire brush, thoroughly coating all areas of the conductor. Slide the outer sleeve over the forging. Fill the sleeve through the grease part using the required amount of filler compound. Plug the grease part with the plug or pill that came with the dead end. Note the smooth end without the hole should be inserted into the port and the end with the hole should be up. Use the hammer to secure the plug into the port. Replace the steel dies in the press with the required dies to press the outer sleeve. Applying a solid lubricant on the outer sleeve is mandatory. Approved bar soap is required to be used as this solid lubricant. Do not use any other type of lubricant other than bar soap. Rub the bar soap over the areas of the outer sleeve that are to be compressed. Locate the start mark closest to the pad of the outer sleeve. This first section to be pressed on the outer sleeve locks the sleeve onto the steel forging inside. This area normally requires two compression bites. Align the start mark closest to the pad with the front bite edge of the die. For the second compression bite in this area, align the back bite edge of the die with the stop mark. Make sure that the top hat of the 100 ton press is installed and locked into place. Be certain that the conductor is held straight and level with the press head. Keeping the conductor straight and level will result in a compressed outer sleeve that will not be curved or deformed. Making certain that the outer sleeve is held tight against the felt washer on the steel forging, compress the sleeve. Make sure that the two die halves close completely and that the pump pressure reaches 10,000 PSI. It is normal to see filler compound exiting from the dead end body around the felt washer. Aligning the back bite edge of the die with a stop mark, press the second compression in this area.
Skip over the center section of the outer sleeve and align the bite edge of the die with the third mark. This is the start mark for the second section of the dead end. Continue compressing to the end of the sleeve, overlapping each bite dite by a half an inch. It is normal to see high temperature compound coming out of the end of the sleeve. This indicates that the proper amount of compound has been used for a good electrical connection. After the outer sleeve is compressed on the cable, make sure to secure the entire dead end assembly so it does not drop or hang down. This can cause uneven stress on the core wires. Once you've finished the compressions, wipe off the excess compound. The outer sleeve should also be wiped clean. The installation is complete and should look like this. The dead end can all be connected to the insulator string and the appropriate jumper connectors can all be installed. The terminal pads are to be brushed along with the use of AFL's All Knox electrical joint compound between the terminal pad and the dead end. This will ensure a good electrical connection. Music